I did it. I finally merged my favorite painting with my favorite city and created my ultimate dream. For past 5 years I've been living in Melbourne. And of that I've spent considerable amount of time walking on the banks of Yarra at South Bank. Being an artist comes with the boon of having an animated vision. And every single time I saw the beautiful skyline of Melbourne, I saw the sky transforming into the starry night sky. So I'm transforming this old canvas of mine into the starry night Melbourne. No matter how skilled and experienced you are, always start with a grid and a reference image. This way you will make sure that all the proportions of your paintings are correct. If you want to recreate the exact same painting, the reference image is in the descriptions. Now I have been a big advocate for gouache paints and in specific emi gouache paints. They are not only a beautiful pigment to use on canvas, they also dry matte which makes my painting look really amazing. These colors are the perfect hybrid between watercolors and acrylic colors. Now let's talk a little bit about the style of Van Gogh. His work is probably the most important piece of puzzle in the post-impressionist movement. By that point of time, the contemporaries wanted to focus more on what they felt than what they saw, which is why his paintings features these pop colors in a very animated form. Now, from the point of view of technique, these paintings are done in multiple layers, starting with blocking the entire background with block colors with the help of large flat brush. After this, we fill the entire painting with these tiny parallel dashes. I keep alternating between my light and dark colors to ensure that none of them overpowers each other. Remember, each stroke that you're creating is representing what is behind it. Take time and care making each and every impression. For example, the black color represents all the dark part of the sky which is calm behind the glow of moon and stars. You need some of the dark colors to really highlight the light colors. As I previously mentioned, these style of paintings are more about feeling than about what you are seeing. So allow your intuition and your gut to keep switching between colors and between the directions of your strokes. Also keep a reference right next to you to know when and where to add highlights and what color needs more attention. Did you know Van Gogh was not really happy with the starry night and he almost painted over it. The only reason we still have this painting is Van Gogh's death. Story like these make me feel a little less guilty about repurposing my old paintings. When the god of art himself did not flinch before reusing his old canvas, why the hell should I? You know what I find the most interesting part about the Starry Night painting? Even though the Starry Night sky, which the name suggests, is the focus of the painting, you can't help but notice that the city nestled in the lap of clouds and mountains is demanding similar attention as that of the whirly cloud in the sky. And though the city itself is almost pitch dark, the stars in the sky are mirrored in the city through the lights coming out of the windows and doors. The subtle details in the painting has a power to elevate it to the whole new level. For example, in the dark parts of the paintings, the black is not all black. Some black has blue in it. Some have green while some have brown. And others are not dark at all. So try to identify these subtle changes in your skyline and work on one building at a time. All good things require time. You know how they say time stops for no one? I feel like art has the power to slow down the time and enables you to experience so much more than you can even imagine you are capable of. While working on the skyline in your painting, we first add the dark base layer followed by the shadows and finish up with highlights and details of the beautiful light in the entire city. The brush that I'm using for this step is called a rigor brush. They have small number of really long bristles which will allow you to work on your minute details. The key to making perfect details is using zero pressure and keeping your brush perpendicular to your canvas. The Yara River that flows through Melbourne reflects the most beautiful lights from the city and creating these reflections in water has to be my favorite part of this painting. Fun fact, did you know the Flinders Street station which is in Melbourne was actually designed for Mumbai? Google it, it has a very fascinating story behind it. Now coming to the highlights in the city, pay close attention to the direction, colors and the shape of the windows. If you look closely, you will be able to make out that all the lights in the city are not all white and yellow. 
try to identify these subtle differences and make your painting as detailed as you desire. Remember, the more time you spend on your painting, the better it will get. You can see that I've added considerable amount of details in my painting, just like Van Gogh did in Starry Nights. But since it is post-impressionist painting, you can get away with adding very less details as well. Once you are done with your painting, don't forget to add your signature. That does increase the price of your painting by thousands of dollars. Now since gouache paints are reactivated by water, to preserve them properly, you have to add a layer of fixative spray to protect your masterpiece. I hope you enjoyed this painting process. And that this video inspired you to create a starry night painting of your own city. If you do create one, please tag Art by Hershey so I can enjoy that as well. Also, be sure to take your painting in front of the actual skyline of your city. That feeling is truly like no other. I wish you have starry nights and sweet dreams. Bye.